Is global warming going to destroy the climate of Earth and make the planet uninhabitable? Well, a new study of the long-term increase in global temperatures is rekindling the climate change debate. We've asked KUSI's John Coleman to report on this new data from his skeptical point of view. John? Well, Sandra and Alan, it was fascinating and pretty frustrating for me to watch the news reports last week. The national media reported on this new study from the sky is falling or a doomsday point of view. So tonight, I'm going to examine just how this study was done and what, if anything, it adds to the science. The scientists behind this new study say it indicates the average temperature of planet Earth will increase by 3 to 8 degrees by the year 2100. That's 87 years from now. A three degree increase would be a pretty big deal, and an eight degree warm up would be the stuff of real climate crisis. By the year 2100, we will be beyond anything human society has ever experienced. That's a quote by the study leader, Sean Marcotte, a postdoctoral researcher at Oregon State University's College of Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Science. An eight degree warm up. It would melt the polar ice caps. It would flood the coastlines. It would turn the U.S. farm belt into a desert. So how did these scientists come up with their projections? Well, they calculated the temperature of Earth over the last 2,000 years and produced this chart. It shows a rather steady temperature for all but the last 300 years or so, and then the temperatures skyrocket upward. Now, before you get too excited, Please note the numbers on the left side of your TV screen. This is the temperature anomalies from so-called normal, and it's done in tenths of a degree. So that huge warm-up we see on the chart, it's actually less than one degree anomaly. So if they are correct, so far the warming is not alarming at all. Well, where did they get the data for this chart? Well. They used just 73 sites to cover the entire globe, the land, and, and the oceans. Their temperatures were projections from ice cores of Greenland, stalagmites in Borneo, and fossilized pollen in Scandinavia. Some of the data comes from the shells of long-dead aquatic microbes, buried as many as 50 feet or more below the ocean floor. From the chemical makeup of the shells, the scientists got clues about the water temperature at the time those creatures existed. This is new and unconfirmed by other researchers. Now, look at this map of global temperature anomalies for January of this year. The brown to the red areas are warmer than normal, and the blue to green areas are cooler than normal. You can see how radically varied the temperatures are from region to region. There's nothing uniform or constant about weather and climate. They are constantly changing. And allow me to be a bit skeptical, too, of using a brand new system of examining the fossilized shells of tiny sea creatures to calculate the temperature a thousand years ago within an accuracy of a tenth of a degree. Allow me to show you two other charts. This one is the monthly temperature deviations from normal month by month for Alaska in 2012. 10 out of the 12 months were colder than average. The winter months were much colder than average. And how about this chart? It shows that for the winter now ending, the extent of sea ice around the North Pole is more or less average for the last 20 years. The sea ice is not all melting. And oh yes, allow me to add, the polar bear population is either stable or actually increasing, and this new study was funded by our tax dollars from the National Science Foundation. It spends at least $2 billion a year on environmental research projects and only supports studies that further the global warming scare. It seems to be on the political and environmental mission. And there's nothing in this study that directly connects the carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere by our burning of fossil fuels with the increase in temperatures. It's merely assumed. 
There is no question that the amounts of CO2 in the atmosphere continue to increase, but it remains only a trace gas, one half of one tenth of a percent of the atmosphere. And there's nothing in this new study to support the theory that CO2 is a pollutant and a threat to the future of Earth. So my bottom line remains pretty skeptical. This new study is not convincing scientifically. My frustration is that the national media never seems to question the global warming scare. I think they're reacting to a love of our planet from an environmental point of view, and they're continuing liberal political agenda. Well, the problem is that they ignore any questions about the science. Sandra and Allen. Thank you, John. And you can